thrilled that the uh, IHDB and the uh, Last Track of the Expo can uh, combine forces a little bit these days and, uh, and have some fun together. Because, you know, we miss you guys. So, um, this is St. Martin. You've been doing this for 30, 40 years. years this year. Good grief. Wow. She's done for this work. She's done for this work. I don't know what she hasn't done in class. Uh, maybe Neon. I don't know. Have you done any Neon? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Give her time. Give her time. Um, and uh, so this is one of my favorite things of, of all of this uh, this weekend is getting to see Lisa make her Dicro B. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Lisa St. Martin. Yay! Hi, everybody. Oh. Hi, everybody. I fell in love with Dicro on Mark's most sparkly things a long time ago. And I just, it's fabulous. It's wonderful stuff. Um, it can be a little tricky at times, but it's all good. So I'm going to make a, um, a black face for you because the dark will really show up well against it. And so I'm going to just start kind of building the views, and that takes a little bit of time. And you guys, oops, let's move this over here so you can see a little bit. Is that better or worse for you guys? Is it good? So I'm using 104 glass. So this glass rod uh, is Italian glass. I'm trying to get myself in here. Made on the island of Milano. This factory has been making glass rods for glass artists for, I don't know, five, six hundred years. It's really lovely stuff. I got a gather and make some concrete. Just start wrapping it around and pull my core and my beat. So, 
did a lot of work that was sold to Bloomingdale's and other times he did one, he did this really cool chess set that was blue all the pieces and did all the, the stuff that was very neat and uh, they won the New York State Pressman Award in 1976 and it was later purchased by the Smithsonian for their, for their glass work. So that's very cool. So he did that for a year, came back to uh, the D.C. area and got my degree in art and education and art history. Got junior high, got married, went to graduate school and worked on my master's in glass technology which was again all furnished one. Met some people in the mid-80s that were tuning around for me and figured that that was a really good way for me to go because I had little kids at that time. Do you remember those little kids, Marty, Ray, and Pam? In Ohio. Alright, so I just added some purple dye press. So now I'm going to flatten it again. The real trick to dye pro is that you want to get it flattened down and secured as fast as you can so that it's not getting burnt by the flame. So I'm just basically getting it hot and running my dye pro tool down to push it down. And the black clear glass just squirts over and hiccups the ends so that I don't have a lot of burn on my dye pro. The burn dye pro is not fun. Because it's flat dark and I hold it in my hand, the heat runs right up and will clean you. It will bug you. Thank you, Kelly. I'm just going to put another layer of color on here. A lot of my beads, like the one I'm wearing, probably has cold layers of dark color. That's because I'm more darker or is just more darker. Thank you. 
smooth down to the surface. This takes me a while to adjust because this frame is so hot. <laughs> We use 10,000 around the generator, and 10,000 is much hotter. It's a much hotter flame. Things push back.
smoothing it out, keeping it all in. Get my shape the way I want it to be. And just soaking the heat in.
helping. The table and leave it on the surface, I don't know if you want me to touch it. But sometimes I like these to be very smooth, and just a little bit of glassy. got the label end here, so we're just going to use it up. Let's uh, gonna burn off the label. You see some flames and smoke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> a nice trick when you get rods that have labels on them is to uh, do one of two one of two things. You can take a razor knife and scrape all the label scrape the label off uh, before you use it, or you could throw it in your kiln, burn the label off. Or you could do this, which is kind of the messiest way to deal with it, but that's how it goes sometimes. So what happens when you throw it in your kiln? It'll burn up, you know, burn up the label. And okay. Kind of yeah. You might have some little acid. Well, it's actually nicer if you burn it off in the kiln, because then it just makes a clean dust you can wipe off. Doing it in the flame like this, it tends, you can see it's kind of getting onto the surface and making it foam a little bit. But in a piece like this, where it's all going to get swirled together and twisted up and mushed, it's not going to show. Now, if that was going to be some external addition to the piece, I would be more fussy. It's a nice thing about things like these fish, because you can use up little scrap bits of color that are laying around, right? So there's some red. I'll put some cobalt blue on there. Ah, they're kind of next to it. I'm going to also do a describe with some yellow. Photoscop, whatever this is. So we'll have all three primary colors on represented on here. So when we twist it up, you'll sort of get the whole rainbow you know, in various locations because the colored, colored lines are going to cross over each other. Okay, so there we've got some stripes of color. And I'm going to fold this over once. Next, I'm going to fold it over sort of on top of the yellow. So what that will do is it will trap a little bit of a yellow line down inside there. And there will still be a little bit that's going to uh, ooze out the sides. It'll probably get some reduction on it, maybe. Give it a little bit of variety of color. So just twist that up. together a little bit. Make a little bit more of a spherical shape. So when you want to get a, a nice round shape, um, often what you want to do is you, know, you just kind of get the shape roughly gathered together, and then if you concentrate the heat at the outer end, the end away from where you're holding it, and let that get soft, and then start bringing the heat back towards the handle, then it will tend to round up into more of a spherical shape. 
if your end, the outer end, doesn't get hot enough, you can be heating it all day and it's not going to round up. So due to the twisting, this is a little bit asymmetrical, but we'll bring it back to a spherical shape. It doesn't have to be a perfect sphere. Okay. okay, so there's a body for the fish. So this is going to be like an angel fish kind of thing. I'm taking out the chill marks. I don't care if it stretches a little bit, so I'm not waiting. You know, when we did the turtle, we did one side, let it cool, and then took the kill marks off the other side. But in this case, I'm not too worried. It's also pretty thick, so you see it's not drooping a lot. The color is a little bit stiff, holds its shape. So, Bob's got these tweezers. You could make these yourself if you wanted with just a pair of tweezers and bend them. Let's see how they've got the tips lined up facing each other. So these are good for um, a couple things. You can use these for making loops on pendants, but they're also handy if you're doing animals, especially one like this. You can use this to make your eyes line up. So if you were making a, a perfectly clear fish, you can even form the eyes with these. Just make little dimples and those would be your eyes. Or if you just put these on there and make a little mark, now I know if I want to match the eyes, I've got a, a guide. Yeah, it's a nice little trick. Yeah, because my eyes are always... <laughs> well, and it's, 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 yeah, it's deceptive. It's deceptive. It's a real skill to be able to make the eyes match. You know, and you can use that, you could use it to mark where you want to put the ears on something too. Anything that needs to be symmetrical. You still have to do the work of uh, getting the size right. So, I have approximately the same amount of glass on each side. Press it flat. And again, I want to keep a distinct edge. And the edge of the fish, the fish eyes. 